afternoon, and welcome to St. James Catholic Church. We extend a very special welcome to our guests who have joined us for Mass this evening. We are honored by your presence and participation. Please stand and let us join together in singing our opening hymn. It's number 528, Joyful, Joyful, number 528. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. With these words, I greet you, and um, those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Father Barachildor. Um, my name's on this building over here. Uh, I've been, the, they've threatened to take it off if I don't properly uh, contribute to the new building funds that you have, so I'm um, sort of debating. I'm thinking about coming over and stealing my name and taking it somewhere else. But um, I just love being in your presence, so it's, it's nice to be here. As we gather to celebrate the, the liturgy this weekend, we come together as God's people, as an imperfect people. We always remember, as the Holy Father says, that we are, we are sinners. And we gather as sinners, but we gather in the presence of the Lord who loves us, and His mercy is always available to us as we pray for forgiveness. I confess, Almighty God, in you, my Almighty God, forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We invite all of the children present here who would like to be dismissed for the children's liturgy of the word to please come forward and assemble here in, in front of church. We send you forth now to listen to God's word from the children's lectionary as uh, your worthy uh, leaders will pick you up at the end. Thanks for coming and go in peace. Be sure and come back. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand by our fathers that, with sure knowledge of the oath of the faith in, w in which they put their faith, that they might have courage. Your people awaited salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this, you glorified us who you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution, the word of the Lord.
our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place that he received as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate. Even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought the one who made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from a man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and countless as the sea sands on the seashore. All of these died in faith. They did not receive what they had promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have the opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who, was, who had received the promises ready to offer his only son. For me it was said, through Isaac descendants, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. 
Provide money for yourself that does not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your laps, and be like the servant who waits for their master to return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared for the hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Peter then said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and an unknown hour and will punish that servant severely and sign him a place with the unfaithful. The servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accordance with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Joe, on behalf of Father Martin Leinbeck and Father Shane Duvall, welcome to St. James. Welcome back. If you can't remember, he was a pastor here from 1979 to 1989. Is that correct? I wasn't born yet. <laughs> so this is my last weekend here at St. James. Uh, my name is Kirby Rust, a seminarian for the Archdiocese. And as part of my last little hoorah from Father Martin and Father uh, Shane, he said, why don't you preach all of the Masses for your last weekend? I said, so what's your advice? Don't let your knees lock up. Well, where do I pay for that advice? So throughout the readings for today, we are presented with the reality of the ascent of faith. In the first reading from the Book of Wisdom, we see that the Israelites had, was able to have hope. They were able to ascent to the oaths in which they knew were true and they were able to have hope. In the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, we hear that faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen, with the example of Abraham and Sarah. And finally, in the gospel today, we hear that our Father in heaven is pleased to give us the kingdom as long as we desire it. The most challenging aspect of the gospel today is perhaps that first little paragraph in that line where it says, for where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The Baltimore Catechism, which is one of the traditional teachings of the Catholic faith, first quotes, why did God make you? And many of us can probably answer that with the spout of a second. God made us to know him, love him, and serve him so that we may be happy with him in this life and supremely happy with him in the next. In other words, our hearts are always called to seek of that which is eternal because it is the eternal being, the perfect being, the infinite being, God himself, who created us out of nothing, out of a pure thought, 
he was able to create us. And he creates us because it is good for us to exist so that we can love him in return. We participate in his love by purely existing. We become heirs of his kingdom and true children of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit through our baptism. When we are dunked into the water three times, I baptize you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Therefore, our vocation is always primarily to seek that which is God, the eternal, above all things. Our hearts are naturally inclined to know God. It is naturally inclined to love God. It is naturally inclined to serve him. Now, in theology, the heart is always associated with the will. There are two faculties of the soul which our Lord creates us, the intellect and the will. The intellect is what brings concepts into us. So the intellect can pick up on what is good, and the will then seeks that which is good. So the intellect can pick up on, wow, that's a good-looking steak. I'm gonna, I want that steak. The will is what pursues that steak. I'm going to order it, and I want it medium rare, and I want a baked potato loaded. The intellect and will cooperate with that, and they recognize the goodness that is there. So the heart is very central to our Lord's teaching. If we even look at the Mass, the prayers are steeped in language of the heart. We begin with the confidior, which is I confess, and we strike our hearts three times so that we break away the chains of sin surrounding our heart. After the gospel, we then profess what is known as the Nicene Creed. And creed comes from the Latin word credo. In the Latin mass prior to Vatican II, the priest would recite credo in unum deum. Credo is, of course, a Latin word, and it is made up of two other Latin words crucial to the mass. Cor, meaning heart, and dare, meaning to give. So by the creed, by its just very outset of its very first word, it's a call to give completely of ourselves, to assent with our whole being to God in what the church teaches. This invites us to move from an intellectual level that we know it's true to a practical level of coming from the heart to allowing that to take over our lives in the way we speak, the way we act, and even in the way we think. <clears throat> so when we profess the creed at every Mass, we surrender our heart, our entire being, to what we are saying. And we should always reflect on that part of the Mass as it is steeped with some of the most profound mysteries of the faith. And pe perhaps this is also probably the only part of the Mass that people have been killed over with the heresies that prolong the creed and where we get the Council of Nicaea by 325. But we first respond to God's invitation to his love and his mercy in our baptism. The, these, easy, these realities easily fade from our minds of either repetition. You know, we come to Mass every Sunday. It gets repetitious. I don't want to be here. Let's go. Let's speed it up. It could be that we're not assenting to everything within our being to what is happening in the sacred liturgy, what is happening in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But primarily, we lose interest of these mysteries because of sin. Now, baptism has a twofold endeavor, a birth into life of Christ and a killing of sin. It washes away the sin of Adam and Eve, but it leaves behind one thing known as concupiscence. And that is how we are able to fall into sin. How are we able to not assent to God through our concupiscence? And the world is constantly preaching that we should love temporal things over that which is the eternal. In other words, the world attempts us to find a treasure other than God. You can't turn on a television anymore without the constant allurements of sin and temptation, which destroys and rips the heart away from God. For example, last night we wanted to go watch a movie, and really the only thing that was at our level would be Bad Moms, because I don't want to watch Finding Dory. And what a, what a horrible example that sets to young people, that a virtue is what's found in Bad Moms. That does, that does not make any sense. It is destroying society, and it rips us away from God, slowly and surely ripping us away from his heart. 
Now the problem ultimately comes when we commit mortal sin. Mortal sin is that which is gravely serious, that which we assent to with our consent, and that which we know is gravely serious. And mortal sin is called mortal because it kills the life of the soul. It kills that grace that which we receive in our baptism. It destroys our relationship with God. We no longer become children of God. We utter the same words as Satan himself at his creation. Non serviam, I will not serve. Ultimately, when we will not serve, we don't love. Because in marriage, you express your love by your willingness to sacrifice for the other. Our Lady of Fatima, who appeared first in 1916, 1916, said that the most prevalent sin that would be committed in our age, so after 1916, our age, would be sins committed against the flesh. Now, we know sins against the flesh are sins against the sexuality. For example, fornication, sex outside of marriage, especially contraception, abortion, all of these things fall under what are sins of the flesh. But these aren't the only sins that which we commit on a daily basis. Not us particularly, but as a world, as a society. But drug and alcohol abuse, deliberate breaking of the Ten Commandments, including missing Mass on Sundays, taking our Lord's name in vain, gossiping, etc., etc. These sins disguise themselves as personal goods, because they bring immediate pleasure. But these are only temporary pleasures, only temporary treasures that we cannot fully invest in. This is the trick of not only of the world, but of the evil one himself. But luckily, we have Jesus Christ as the head of our faith, and he said when he came that he was able to establish the sacrament of confession. So if we have fallen into a grave sin, God is there in his loving mercy to welcome us back into the sheepfold, as it were. So we have that hope to ultimately devote ourselves to him. Here within the Mass, we too have the ability to do as Abraham and Sarah did, to assent with our whole being to God. Holy Mass is the most perfect prayer because we are present before Christ on Calvary. We literally see Christ on the cross, we see his heart laid bare for us. We see who his true treasure is, and that is us. For what can be greater than the spiritual assurance of Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, that God's will is for us to be with him in heaven? So this is why St. Peter responds to our Lord today in the gospel, that there is hope, that he wants to know what our Lord is saying in this gospel. So our Lord says, Fear not, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. This is indeed spiritual consolation. And this is even anticipated in our second reading from our letter to the Hebrews. Abraham and Sarah, all of their acts, all of their whole being was geared towards what is eternal. So that's why the sands of the seashore, I'm not going to go count those sands, it's a representation of what is eternal. It's just so much that you can't fathom it. It points to the eternal. Now our Lord does highlight what the punishment will be for those who are not ready on that day when he comes again in glory. Because he will not come as merciful Savior on that second coming. He will come as just judge. So where are our hearts today? Are we willing to give completely of ourselves to God? And to Jesus Christ, who came as man, crucified, died, and rose so that we could have heaven with him. We must always recite that Psalm 51 each day. Create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew within me a steadfast spirit. We have that opportunity today. When we come to this blessed sacrament, where we are able to receive Jesus Christ, present body, blood, soul, and divinity, we have that ability to speak with him heart to heart. We must always take advantage of this. So create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew within me a steadfast spirit. So each evening when we lay our heads down on our pillows, we should do an examination of conscience. 
Am I putting God above everything else on this planet? Am I willing to give of myself completely to God and to his church of which Jesus Christ himself established? If he isn't, where is my treasure if it is not God? In response to God's word, as we've heard and heard it reflected upon, we profess our faith by reciting the creed together. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things that are born in this world. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, and the light from the light, true God from true God, and the God from the 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 God, and the God from through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn to our Heavenly Father, who knows our hearts, and ask Him to hear the prayers, or our prayers, and petitions. For the Universal Church, and for all bishops and priests, that we may continue to spread the gospel faithfully throughout the world, so that we may seek the true treasures of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord for governments throughout the world, that they may create and uphold laws to protect the sanctity of all human life from conception to natural death and to promote a more tranquil and peaceful world. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, dying, or experiencing loss within their family, that they may experience the healing power of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. For all those who serve abroad, especially our brothers and sisters from St. Mark's in Haiti, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those discerning a vocation to the priesthood, religious life, or holy matrimony, especially those completing their engaged encounter this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who have died, and all those who will die this day, and especially for Dorothy Medley and Pat French, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may know the love and mercy of God and enter into the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear these petitions and those we hold in silence of our hearts, and grant them according to your most gracious will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our hymn during the preparation of the gifts. It's number 507, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 507.
Humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, Lord. The spiritual sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash you with my sins and cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my friends then my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered by your power and, and by your power transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty at our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us a Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been re restored to those gifts of yours, that by, by sinning we had lost in, a, in, in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the working and the power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, so that especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your apostle, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Archbishop, and the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. The body of Christ can be safe for eternal life. the blood of Christ can be saved for eternal life. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is number 815. You the satisfy the hungry heart, number 815.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements for this weekend. Uh, since Father Martin Leinbeck is away doing a wedding this evening, and Father Shane is at a 25th priesthood or uh, anniversary for Father Mark Spaulding, uh, they have asked me on their behalf to welcome Dr. Stephen Black, who is finally with us. And Dr. Black began in the office this week, and this is his first weekend liturgy. And I have been with him this week in the office, and he's going to fit in just perfectly well. So join me in welcoming Dr. Stephen Black. Between the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. masses tomorrow, there is a meet and greet reception for the new staff, new staff of the parish, and that'll take place at the Bachelor Door Hall. I think there's going to be a little substantial food. I don't know if there's donuts or what it is, but there will be food over there to meet and greet the people of the new staff. Uh, we also welcome the sisters, and Sister Augusta is here this evening. Uh, there she is, and she will be speaking on uh, family faith formation for the parish. Good evening, everybody. I'm another one of the new faces that's been around. I just stand out a little bit more. Um, but my name is Sister Augusta, and I'm the new Director of Religious Education and Formation here at St. James. And so it's really my joy to tell you a little bit about the new name and the new game plan that we have for religious education this year. So if you just tuned me out because I said religious education and you have not previously been involved with RE, I ask you to tune me back in. So we have a new name, it's Family Faith Formation. Um, and that applies to all families of all kinds. So that's pretty much everybody I'm looking at. Um, family faith formation is a way to help all of us put family back at the top of our list of priorities and to put Christ at the center of our families. So it's going to involve two key elements. The first is a monthly meeting where parents and their children come to be taught about the faith, to receive catechesis. But then parents, we're going to give you instructions and materials so that you can live out your call to be the first and primary educators of your children in the faith. So you'll go home with the materials needed to teach them at home. But there will be plenty more opportunities and ways that we can support one another as families and together grow closer to Christ. So that's my brief little intro. If you look in the bulletin this weekend, there's a lovely brightly colored flyer. Please look at it. Check the website for updates. If you have any questions, concerns, or you'd like to help me in any way, please call the office. Um, and I hope we're going to have registration on August 31st. So I hope to meet many or see many of you there if I don't meet you before then. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 738, In Christ There Is No East or West. Please join in singing number 738.